And now we actually have Travis in as well. He's going to give me a little bit of a break here. So Travis, going to toss it over to you real quick for the latest. So Rachel, stay on top of that storm that's approaching on Alaska mm -hmm. and Lake Livingston. We're going to talk a little bit more about what's happening right now in Montgomery County moving towards New Waverly. So this is the broad view. We have a tornado watch in all of the counties you see in red. But the main action right now, as Rachel's been expertly showing you, is Montgomery County, Walker County, Polk, San Jacinto, Trinity counties. And I think that's where the action is going to stay. While Houston and Harris County technically under this watch, the way things are evolving with the way low pressure is spinning through, it looks like the focus will stay here up to the north. And I want to go down to this other tornado, the newest tornado warned storm that's crossing the northern side of Lake Conroe. This has uh, been a radar confirmed tornado. The latest warning that just came out has gone back to radar indicated, but we are seeing signs that there's debris in this signature on the north side of Lake Conroe. So this is missing the south side of Lake Conroe. And as you were saying early, Charlie, it's kind of taking a similar path. Yes, but this time farther to the south in New Waverly, you are directly downstream from this tornado warned storm. This is a storm that you need to seek shelter from right now if you are in New Waverly because it is moving quickly at 30 miles per hour. It will be there before you know it. So get on the phone, call up your friends, call up your family. If you're in the vicinity of New Waverly, tell everyone to get in their shelter right now because this storm is coming your way. This is that velocity product that we show you and here it is in motion. You see the first tornado warned storm quickly skirting just to the south of Huntsville now into San Jacinto County and then this is the second road storm on the northern edge of Lake Conroe approaching New Waverly rather quickly. And this is one of the things that we're looking at is uh, this right here is what we call our debris uh, tracker. So we're looking for potential debris and at times we've seen lots of shades of blue right where that curvature is, that, that circulation that we see on the velocity. When those are co-located together, that is a sign that we have a radar confirmed tornado. We're still seeing that signature and again it is directly approaching New Waverly. So I've drawn a future track on New Waverly. Should be there at 1024. That's like 15 minutes from now. So again, not a lot of time left to prepare in New Waverly. This storm is certainly tracking your way. In the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, I believe that is uh, footage that we're seeing. Is that from Jaime Garcia? Okay, and he is in New Waverly, so he is stationed directly downstream from this storm. And if we can get Jaime uh, on to talk to him, that would be fantastic if we can set that up. But that's the picture of what they're seeing in New Waverly. And it's hard for me to see right now, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like almost like modest clouds are being seen. Uh, those are often associated with severe weather, and sometimes that can include the possibility of tornadoes. So uh, Jaime, uh, can you hear me? Jaime Garcia, are you there? Hey, Travis, it is unbelievable the scene here, if you could tell. The clouds are very ominous. I'm literally just uh, on the south side of uh, New Waverly, just on the outside to be safe as we see what comes across here. And, uh, and what, describe the scene for me, Jaime. It's, it looks like the roads are fairly calm right now. Hopefully folks have gotten the message by now that they need to be seeking shelter in New Waverly from this storm. Yes, I have noticed uh, traffic has literally uh, kind of calmed down here just recently. Uh, we were literally in New Waverly when we heard that warning, so we kind of just came on the outside uh, because, you know, I always tell people I want to be able to tell the story and not be in the story. Absolutely. Now, what does the atmosphere feel like to you, and, and what are you seeing with your own eyes? Well, we, when we came in from Houston, uh, uh, man, just the colors. You could just see the colors, just the change in here. Those uh, kind of a light blue and that white and it was just unbelievable, these ominous clouds that are coming at us, uh, but it, it looks like it's, it's right just uh, north of us. So uh, that's where uh, uh, Conroe's at, where you reported that, that's west over there, and this is where we're expecting to come across if something uh, does come across. Now, are you anywhere near a safe shelter in the event that this tracks right towards you? Do you have any place that you can seek shelter from? Absolutely. We're, we're literally just uh, uh, a quarter of a mile from... Uh, a gas station that we see right, right, uh, right, uh, just south of us. And it's hard for me to tell from your picture, but what are the winds doing right now at your location? Do you feel much of a breeze coming in? Yeah, the, the winds have not picked up yet. I'm really, really surprised, but uh, but I, I, I can expect that here very, very, very soon. And Jaime, I have a question. Charlie Etzidi here on the desk. Uh, did you mention that you did you drive through any rain or anything when you were coming from the Houston area? Um, talk about just kind of the general weather conditions you experienced while you were making your way over there. Actually, it was a pleasant drive. 
you know, and so you start approaching Conroe, you're seeing just the ominous clouds, but no rain thus far at all. Okay. No rain at all. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, and Travis asked this, you have a safe place. You said the gas station there is where you're going to plan to go if things uh, start to go left? Uh, absolutely. We, we have a place to, to go to, uh, but we can tell that, that things are definitely turning uh, pretty bad out here, uh, and we're expecting something here. Uh, here at any moment here. Uh, hey. I'm not sure what the track is, Travis, at this time. Hey, Jaime, this is a Brandon Hamilton at the desk as well. A question for you just mentioned that you, you're expecting things to turn. Uh, is, have you noticed anything's changing? Is like the winds, or what are you noticing where you're at? of, you know, how strong these winds are coming in. And, I mean, I'm seeing numbers here. I'm just going to pop up a few, um, close to 70-plus miles per hour. So these are extremely strong winds associated with this system. Um, and still, we are going with the wording radar uh, confirmed tornado. So still looking um, at that potential for a tornado to be on the ground on Alaska. This is right over you at this point. Um, very northern portions of Lake Livingston. Uh, again, moving on off to the northeast, east northeast, I would say, more easterly at this point, at about 35 miles per hour. I do want to turn back on our velocity here as well, um, where you're seeing that very bright color, that bright yellow, that green touching. That's where we are seeing that strong rotation. And Rachel, go ahead and turn on the debris tracker mm -hmm. because we're definitely seeing debris, unfortunately, in this tornado mm -hmm. right over, over on Alaska. You mm -hmm. see all those colors? Oh, For wow, those of you yes. who are watching at home, you see how it kind of drops down that towards mix, the, the mix of colors. That, that. That's a sign that it's detecting debris. And, and not a good sign. It just cuts me up because on Alaska got hit mm -hmm. by that tornado right. back in April of 2020. Right. And a few people died in that one. And it just, and I know there's a lot of anxiety there because of that. And here it is. We've got wow. another conf radar confirmed tornado that is tracking right through on Alaska at this time. So what Rachel's showing you right there is the debris tracker, and it's right on top of where we're seeing that strong and circulation. And Travis, question for you, for the debris tracker to pick that up, like what, what is it picking up? So it's picking up, so what, what the radar is doing is it's saying, hey, I'm, I'm seeing objects that are not uniform, like a raindrop you expect to be basically a sphere. And it's saying, oh, this, these things are all sorts of weird shapes. And then, so it's picking up debris. It's picking up things like trees. Um, wow. it's, it's picking up, you know, if there's any buildings that have been hit any of that mm -hmm. that 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 plywood that comes off roof shingles things like that that's what it is detecting and what makes this particularly concerning is because of how far away on alaska is from the radar site that means that debris is getting lofted thousands of feet mm. into the wow. air which usually indicates the presence of a stronger tornado and that is what is bearing wow. down on, on alaska oh at this time i've got some friends up in uh, point blank i'm going to reach out to them because it just hit them as well to see if they can give us a feel for what's just passed on through all right, and so uh, it's 1022 this morning. Obviously, we have a very active weather situation happening in the northern and northwestern parts of the Houston area. And so we're joined by Chief Meteorologist Tra Travis Herzog, as well as Meteorologist Rachel Breyers. I'm Charlie Yetzity, Brandon Hamilton here on the desk this morning. And so this has just been um, a very intense situation that's been unfolding all morning long. Uh, Charlie, that's the perfect word to describe. And unfortunately, we've seen multiple tornado warnings. We've also seen uh, damages, reports of damages, the radar confirmed tornadoes. Uh, it's just a busy morning across our area. And so I don't know if we're able to get up Rosie when I believe you mentioned that she was able to get her shot up. Is that possible right now? Okay, so we got Rosie here, and Rosie, I know you were on your way to Conroe, and so I can see some clouds are there in your shot right now. So what's going on weather-wise where you're at? Hi, Charlie and Brandon. Yes, you're correct. We just pulled over here on the side of I-45 North. We just passed Willis. We did see a few raindrops as we passed FM 1960, but no heavy precipitation. Skies have just kept getting more dark, more cloudy as we continue to drive northbound. When we opened up our GPS app, we did see a tornado warning pop up when we entered in Huntsville. So hopefully that will help warn some drivers as they head up to the area. We'll check back in shortly here, back here on I-45 North. Back and so, Rosie, just to make sure our viewers, again, know where you are, you, said you just passed the Willis area, correct? Yes, correct. And now we're near FM 1097. 
Okay, thank you. Definitely uh, make sure you all uh, stay safe as well. We do I want to send it back to uh, Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog. And Travis, uh, still following these tornado warnings this morning. Yeah, we, ha we have, are very concerned about what's happening right now on the north side of Lake Livingston. So we have two storms that we're tracking. One of those has just come through New Waverly, potentially producing a tornado. But we are almost certain, based on what we are seeing on radar, that there has been damage done in San Jacinto County from Point Blank to on Alaska because of the tight circulation we're seeing. Now, the radar beam is hitting about 8,000 feet above the ground up here. That's almost that's a mile and a half above the ground, and it's detecting debris, and that's what has us really concerned that this is potentially a, a large damage and destructive tornado that has come through here on the northwest side of Lake Livingston. So Rachel's got a closer view of what's happening on that storm right now. She's been slicing every angle through it, getting more information. Rachel, what's the latest that you're seeing in terms of that circulation, its strength, and the debris that we're also seeing on our debris tracker? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we are still looking at it pretty much as strong as it has been over the last couple of hours. And, you know, Charlie and Brandon can tell you, we started uh, coverage on this one storm over an hour ago, and it's just continued along this same path. I do want to go ahead and put a path on this so you, the next round of people can get ready because this storm still showing those strong signs of rotation. And unfortunately, just like Travis said, it does look like that rotation rolled right over on Alaska. Um, it is moving to the northeast, though, at about 35 miles per hour, heading towards New Willard at around 10 42 Seven Oaks 1046 Barnes around 1104 Chester around 1115 so if it continues along the same path, um, it does look like it will go just to the south of Corrigan. So uh, at this point, you know, we're going to continue to watch this one very closely. We'll have to see the National Weather Service now drawing up another tornado warning for to give, you know, Seven Oaks a little bit of lead time, kind of like what we're trying to do here, because unfortunately, still seeing that rotation. Let me go ahead and turn on that for you. Let's turn off some of this extra. And I mean, again, uh, we are still seeing such strong indications of rotation. Uh, what we are looking at here Doppler winds we have our Doppler radar down in League City sending out pulses of energy it, the frequency it get, gets back tells us how fast those winds are moving and also what direction those winds are moving so whenever we see red that means it's going away when we see green that means it's going towards the radar in this case we are seeing such strong wind speeds that we've actually surpassed the red we are in the oranges to even the yellow color so this is indicating very strong rotation most likely seeing a tornado on the ground at this this point. Um, again, that is still right over the Onalaska area, the northern portions of Lake Livingston, heading off to the east-northeast, impacting parts next of Livingston as well as Seven Oaks. So Livingston, be in your safe spot. Seven Oaks, I want you to be in your safe spot as well. You want to head to an interior room on the lowest floor of your home or whatever building you're in. Now, let's say you're not in a, a sturdy building. You want to make sure that you head to that. And depending on your lead time, you may still have time to go ahead and do that. But Again, that's that main area of rotation we are looking at. So now. we're, you know, keeping a very close eye. You know, Travis and I talking about this, even behind the scenes of how concerned we are at this storm as it continues to move off to the east, northeast. And unfortunately, you know, I'm going to turn this off here. But, I mean, we've been watching this rotation over the last few hours and it is still just continuing to be pretty much as strong as it has been over the last 30 minutes to an hour as it continues to move off to the northeast. And Rachel, the uh, we're almost on the edge of where we can even see with mm -hmm. the National Weather Service radar that's currently up there, which is why it's so important to get these new radars mm -hmm. uh, pretty quickly here. And, and I want to show you again, we'll zoom down a little more, right along 190, this circulation went right over point blank and skirted on Alaska. And when you see that big patch of yellow at the very least, even if there's not a tornado touching down in the ground, we've got winds gusting 60 to 80 miles per hour, most likely with what we're observing just on the circulation. Again, the radar beam's hitting about 8,000 feet above the ground here. So this is a strong circulation that's in the, the middle part of the atmosphere, but it usually is translating down to the ground, uh, especially when we see that debris signature, which we did see. Wait, Rachel, what you got right yes, now? Yes, and it does look like um, getting some reports um, from San Jacinto County saying they were reporting some power lines down near on Alaska. I absolutely believe that. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't from a tornado, just gusty winds, perhaps. I mean, yes. But that, the, what we're seeing on radar, that is no surprise at all. So yeah. I imagine that the power is going to be out for a while mm -hmm. because they were likely not just, you know, like a transformer blue. This is power lines actually yeah. down. So uh, devastating situation there to see that. Again, this is rolling through the north side of Lake Livingston, and we're about to lose what we can actually see with the radar because it's on the edge of the beam. Uh, this is going to stay 
stay north of you in the city of Livingston. So if you're on the south side of the lake, yes, you've got some stormy weather, but this right here is going to miss you. Let me pull the view out just a little bit and show you, though, that we do have another circulation uh, that potentially could reach you. So uh, Jaime Garcia is our storm tracker in New Waverly, and, uh, and he said that they've been getting some hail right there. This one is not showing the same kind of circulation that it had earlier. Notice uh, which one your eye is drawn to almost instantly. It's the one that tracked just south of Huntsville and then right along 190 towards uh, Point Blank and on Alaska. So the, the circulation is going to miss the city of Livingston to the north. I'd still play it safe on this one, but it definitely it's uh, lifting off to the north of Livingston and then Seven Oaks, you are in the pipeline uh, for this for this uh, potential tornado that's still on the ground according to our radar. Now we do have Jaime Garcia still available to us. Uh, Jaime, give us an, an update because we were very concerned about New Waverly as that storm was rolling in yeah. and then it looked like the circulation kind of collapsed as the storm was rolling into New Waverly. Excellent news. What are you seeing on the ground right now and what have you observed over the last 15, 20 minutes? Well, we had a lot of cars see, uh, seek shelter, definitely. And uh, I'm literally right here in New Waverly, just uh, south of Huntsville. And you see that storm that came through. That's, that's, that's going uh, east right there. Uh, but I, I'm kind of in the calm of the storm. I'm between uh, another cell that's, uh, that's coming up in the Willis, I believe, or through Willis, uh, just south of me in New Waverly right now. Okay, and what, did, what, did, what was the wind like as you were going, as that storm was passing on through? Did you feel the wind pick up much? Yes, yes, the winds definitely did pick up. They're pretty gusty, and then we are able to get some uh, pea-sized hail right here where we went under the bridge. Uh, so so pea-sized hail, so that's not enough to do any damage. That's certainly some good news, but that doesn't mean that you caught the biggest hail that this storm has to offer. So now that this storm has passed on through, what's your, what's your plan now? Where are you going next? Well, I'm just going to stay here on the 45 corridor here. And, uh, and uh, might even go towards Huntsville, see uh, if there's any damage over there. Okay, Jaime, thank you again for being our eyes on the ground there in New Waverly. So good news right now, it looks like for New Waverly, that the storm did weaken a touch as it passed on through. We continue to see, though, this very intense thunderstorm with a radar-confirmed tornado uh, that is continuing to work its way through now Polk County. So this has passed through Point Blank and on Alaska. We still see a whole bunch of lightning, and that's an indicator that this storm is maintaining its strength, and we've seen the radar signature repeatedly that shows that there is a very well-defined circulation, but the radar beam is about 8,000 feet above the ground. That doesn't tell us what's happening at ground level, but because we've also seen debris detected by the radar, that is a sure sign that this thing is most likely it does have a tornado on the ground and still very well may. The tornado warning now runs until 11 a.m. It is just passing through on Alaska. Seven Oaks, you are next in the pipeline for this circulation as it works its way towards highway 59. Uh, so eerily similar path to what we saw with the April 2020 tornado. That one was an EF3. I'm not going to speculate on what the rating of this one might be, but I will say that the debris signature on this one is not as strong as what I recall seeing during the tornado that happened back in 2020. So this is the latest uh, on the warning. Uh, all that lighting there is indicating the presence possibly also of some hail. So there's going to be hail and gusty winds in this, even if there's not still a tornado on the ground. And even if the tornado misses your location, there can still be these winds gusting 60 to 80 miles per hour wrapping around that circulation because we're seeing a very large circulation on what we can detect on radar. Now, getting back to the other storm that is southwest of here, this one currently has a, tor uh, a severe thunderstorm warning on it. That runs until 1045. Notice the threat tag here says tornado possible. So anytime you see one of these yellow polygons, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. And when we fill it in with that that light magenta shade, that means that we have a potential tornado. Our tornado is possible to come out of that at any time. So we're still uh, not uh, convinced that this is not going to produce a tornado. So this is still possible as this tracks its way uh, just a little bit farther south than the one that just came through the north side of Lake Livingston. So this one is tracking more along 150 towards Cold Spring and the southern half of Lake Livingston and eventually the community of Lake Livingston. So we're keeping a watchful eye on this one as well. And I want to pull the view out one oh go ahead go ahead charlie 
word that there are 81 customers currently right now reporting uh, power outages. So, of course, we are expecting that number to continue to grow because, as you pointed out, uh, with the debris radar, it does look like, you know, there's significant, you know, damage happening in that area. And so I wanted to ask you, as this, uh, as these storms continue to move through, does it look like at any point it's going to weaken? I mean, we've just continued to watch it travel through and it's warning after warning after warning. These storms don't look like they want to weaken, but wow. they will eventually move out of southeast Texas. So okay. that's what's going to happen. The encouraging sign is that if you look farther down the line, we're not seeing any lightning. We're not seeing these blossom anymore. So I think this is going to be it in terms of our, our storm threats today when it comes to those rotating thunderstorms. And recall yesterday we were telling you that north of Houston, we were going to have the possibility of severe weather, and this is exactly it. And the reason why we expect it to be north of Houston is this is where a front is stalled out and low pressure is tracking along that front. And I believe what you're actually seeing, the circulating storm that's just went through on Alaska and is now in the northern part of Polk County or the western part of Polk County, I think that's actually the main area of low pressure spinning up along that front, which is similar to the setup that we had back in January of 2023 when we had that EF3 tornado go through Pasadena and Deer Park and eventually fizzle out near Baytown. Uh, same type of general setup, a very similar type thing is going on right here now, uh, well to the north of Houston. So uh, maybe you woke up this morning or you were, you were on your phone and you saw tornado watch for Houston. Uh, that is still in effect technically, but based on what we are seeing right now, it does not look likely that we're going to have any tornadic storms this far south down towards I-10. It's all what we're seeing up off to the north. Uh, those two storms now on either side of Lake Livingston. And Rachel, have you seen anything new from the National Weather Service in terms of damage reports or anything new as you're slicing through that storm before we lose it on radar? Yeah, not seeing anything um, new on that. It does look like, I want to go back um, to the storm, you know, that we've been keeping an eye on. They have dropped that warning. It looks like down for San Jacinto and Walker County. So it now is only including Polk County at this point. Okay. Um, so, yes, but obviously, unfortunately, yes, we're getting very far from our radar beam at this point, but still could be looking at the potential for a tornado to be on the ground. So that's why we are taking this so seriously at this point, why you need to make sure that you are seeking shelter, especially if you are in the Seven Oaks area. Seven Oaks right now, really right uh, between, really on Highway and 59 right here, right between Livingston to Corrigan is where we are going to be watching for that rotation to move over so you do want to head to your safer spot. And I'm going to look at this velocity again. And unfortunately, we are still looking at such a tight area of rotation. Again, this is moving off to the east. It's moving at about uh, 35 miles per hour. So continuing off to, yeah, east at 35 miles per hour. So let me go ahead and put a little storm track on this to give you a better idea of when this could, could potentially impact where you are. So we're going to put that just off. And Rachel, I think we're we have on the left side of your screen live pictures. Is this Rosie, Rosie's camera shot? Okay, that's Rosie when she is headed uh, north uh, to so, the area where this is all happening, yep. to Huntsville. And so you can see the roads very wet there in her shot. Uh, blue skies, which is odd because obviously we're talking about all these storms, but that gives you a sense of just how quickly these storms are coming and going. Uh, Rosie, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me, Brandon yes. and Charlie? Yes, if you can just talk to us. Uh, we know you just went through a lot of rain. Can, can you kind of describe what you saw and, and what you're seeing right now? Sure. So we just passed New Waverly, and we are approaching Huntsville. We're on I-45 North, and literally every several minutes, the weather just changed. As we were driving up, we hit sunny skies. Then we hit really dark clouds. As you said, now we're driving through some blue skies. The precipitation uh, will go up and down. In some parts, it was really hard, especially when we were driving through New Waverly. Now that we are leaving and heading towards Huntsville, it is lightening up. Uh, some cars were throwing on their emergency lights when the rain was getting uh, really hard coming down. We haven't noticed much strong winds uh, towards the interstate here on I-45 North, but um, as we're heading up towards Huntsville, it looks like things are letting up, and so we might turn back around and see uh, 
uh, how things are going near the new Waverly and maybe near Lake Livingston. But that's what's going on right here out on the roads. Back to you. And yet, and Travis can probably, or Rachel can talk to this. I think where you are right now, uh, part of this storm, it is letting up. So that, that's the good news. Um, and thankfully, what we're seeing from your shot is, yeah, thankfully, uh, you know, the, the conditions are letting up. So. And Rosie, have you seen any debris or anything like that as you're making your way up there? Charlie, we have not seen any tour of debris, at least not on the interstate. Okay, well that's that's good to hear because uh, earlier we were watching that pretty st strong storm move right across I-45. So, uh, okay, Rosie, well we will continue to uh, take your live picture and we'll check in with you a little bit later. All right, and so, um, you know, obviously this has just been uh, an incredibly intense day of weather, and so, of course, uh, we, we want to get back over to meteorologist uh, Rachel Breyers as well as chief meteorologist Travis Herzog. They're both here tracking uh, everything that you need to know. Yeah, so we were talking about it a little bit earlier. You know, most of this activity at this point, staying north of I-10, even here in Houston, we are seeing some scattered showers, um, but that is about it for the time being. The main areas that we are watching, the main areas of concern with our severe thunderstorm warning and our tornado warnings are in our northeastern counties. I'm talking over towards Cold Spring as well as over towards Livingston, Seven Oaks, Corrigan. And we do still have our tornado warning in effect for parts of Polk County that will go until 11 a.m. as this continues to move off to the east at about, um, at about 35 miles per hour. Hail size in this could be over an inch at this point. So in addition to the fact that we do have that tornado threat with this system, we are also looking at that threat as well for hail and the National Weather Service they have been going with radar in our uh, radar confirmed tornado because we are still seeing so, so many signs of that strong rotation and I'm going to go ahead and put that on for you and I'm going to go ahead and turn it off so unfortunately our radar um, as far as the one stretches that is down in League City it is almost to the edge of that but even just looking at this I mean you can see this bright area of yellow we are seeing rotation right where that is we are seeing that little bit of green touching that yellow that is indicating that we are seeing that counterclockwise motion this is heading straight to the east into seven oaks seven oaks you do need to make sure you are in your safe spot this is heading right towards you will move over right over 59 and then could potentially continue to move on off to the east eventually could actually hold together as it moves east out of southeast texas so again seven oaks this is right heading towards you right along highway 59 that's the rotation here let me go ahead and circle that for you so again, continuing right on off to the east. So again, head to your safe spot. This has been really the main storm of concern throughout the day today, just because it has had such strong rotation associated with it. But we have also seen other storms today that have had indications of rotation. We still have the severe thunderstorm warning in effect for part of San Jacinto and Walker counties. It includes the city of Cold Spring. Now the threat for this 60 mile per hour wind speeds, hail size could be around quarter size. And in addition to that, this has also shown some signs of rotation. So that's why there is still a tornado possible tag on this storm. We'll take a closer look at the velocity on this one as well. And you I mean you can see just comparing it to what we were seeing um, with the, uh, torn the tornado worn storm just off to the northeast. Not quite as tight of rotation, not str as strong rotation by any means. We were seeing indications of slightly stronger rotations when it was back over towards Montgomery and Lake Conroe. But it is still possible, especially in the environment that we are in that we could end up seeing um, you know the potential for another tornado warning to go out we cannot rule that out by any means and like Travis was saying earlier we have you know a, a front in an area of low pressure that's currently rolling to the east over that front it's creating a lot of spin in our atmosphere which is why we have seen some of these tornadoes actually popping up across southeast Texas so again this is our main area of concern seven oaks be in your safe spot um, this is going to move right in between Corrigan and Livingston. I do want to go down to the south a bit. Conroe, you are still going to be looking at some rainfall moving on off to the northeast. Lightning, pockets of heavy rain. Houston at this point, we are looking at more of streamer showers at this point. Um, again, we've been really reiterating that our main concern today when it came to the possibility of strong to severe storms most likely would stay above I-10. You know, obviously we'll keep a close eye on everywhere in southeast Texas, but definitely seeing the bulk of the instability ongoing uh, really 
it to the north of Houston at this point. So um, continuing to keep a close eye on it, you know, obviously keeping a close eye on the debris signature as well. I mean, at this point, Travis, you know, we've been watching this over the last few hours, and I, I do believe we're going to start to get a lot of damage reports in as we head into the next few hours. Unfortunately, and we're getting someone on the phone right now that is up in point blank. Uh, this is this is Bart. Bart Wardham, is that your is that your last name, Bart? Bart Windrum. Bart, can you hear me? Yeah. Bart hey, Bart, Windrum. this is Travis Herzog from ABC 13. Thank you so much for calling us. Uh, you are in point blank, correct? Yeah. Okay, so that's on the northwest side of Lake Livingston for our viewers that aren't familiar. The, the worst part of that storm passed right through point blank. What did you observe as it was coming through? Just a lot of rain. A lot of rain and some wind, but that's, a, that's about it. Okay, so you didn't see any signs of a tornado, and, and the wind, would you say, was it significant, or was it just like a typical strong storm coming on through at your location? Just, hey, just a typical strong storm. I'm about two miles south of the bridge. Okay, and do you still have power? Power went out for just a minute, and then it was right back on. Okay, excellent. Have you uh, been in touch with any neighbors or family in the region to see how they're doing? No, I mean, the neighbors around the point blank to stay where I'm at, uh, reached out and just see how they're doing, but everybody seems to be fine. It's just a whole lot of rain. That's great. Well, fantastic news, and let's hope that's the report everywhere up there around uh, Polk and San Jacinto counties. Uh, Bart, thank you so much for joining us, and if you catch wind of anything else that's happened up there, any damage reports that come in through your networks, call us back and let us know, okay? Will do. All right, All right. Thanks. thanks, Bart. Enjoy the rest uh -huh. of your Sunday. Okay, so that's encouraging right there to hear from someone in point blank that the storm came through and they didn't see any signs of damage. The wind picked up, but it wasn't anything too terrible. Again, the radar beam is detecting things that this location in southeast Texas, about seven to 8,000 feet above the ground. So we can see a strong rotation on radar there. Doesn't always mean that it's translating to something that's currently on the ground. That said, the National Weather Service still is calling this a, an observed tornado that is on the, uh, potentially on the ground right now in the, the west western and northern parts of uh, Polk County. So this red zone that you see, this is the tornado watch. So if you live or were driving through this zone earlier today, you may have gotten an alert on your smartphone that said tornado watch. That's what this is for. The ingredients coming together to potentially produce tornadoes, but all the action has really been up here in our, in our northern part of the, of, the, of the region that we serve. And so we've seen these circulations first spin up uh, around Brenham and Navasota and then slide off to the northeast toward Lake Living. In. I'm encouraged right now by what I'm seeing for the vast majority of us that we're not going to see any additional spin-ups, although we are beginning to see a little bit of lightning now over Lake Conroe, and so that could be a sign of a storm that's trying to get its act together. Let me go back to our view. This is our Lake Conroe Lighthouse camera. It's aimed to the south, so we are looking directly south at the dam. We are not looking towards the storms, and you'll notice there's this like very long, large, flat, low cloud. That right there is the underside of what's called a shelf cloud, so this means that we've had rain cooled air sweep across the lake that's a sign that you're not going to get a tornado so once that rain cooled air moves on through no tornado you can still get rain you can get hail you can get gusty winds but no tornado so that's an encouraging sign of what i'm seeing and also we're not seeing those white caps on the lake anymore like we did when we showed you this about 15 20 minutes ago so that is also another encouraging sign back to our 13 alert radar and there again is the tornado watch. Those are the two circulations that we are watching. We do have rain extending down into Houston, so we've got some showers coming on through, but at this time, not seeing any signs that those are blossoming into these severe thunderstorms. And other encouraging sign is that we don't have a warning anymore on the storm on the west side of Lake Livingston. So another round of rain is coming through, but right now, no warning. So this is an observed tornado circulate or tornado warning. So we only are, those are only issued when there's been confirmation of a touchdown, either by a storm spotter seeing it physically touch down or through what's called a radar a confirmed tornado when you see both the wind speeds that are swirling around and you also see debris along with that. Those are the two ways that we can get those observed tornado warnings. And this is approaching Seven Oaks right now along Highway 59. If you're up in Corrigan, the circulation looks like it's going to stay to your south, but stay on guard because sometimes these will turn to the north and also you're in a part of the storm 
storm that can get heavy rain, hail, and also the potential for uh, for some uh, for some lots of lightning as well. So lightning, uh, heavy heavy rain and hail. That's in your part of the storm up there in Corrigan, assuming that circulation keeps on sliding in the same direction. So this is a look at the debris tracker, and there you can see we're seeing the colors change from red more towards yellow and blue, but it's in a line that extends along the radar beam. Sometimes when we're seeing that, that's actually the radar picking up on some, some oddly formed hail, so that can also be a signature of hail uh, in that storm. And again, we're kind of on the edge of the useful zone of the radar beam, but you'll notice if you just kind of step back and just kind of watch this loop, there's two zones we've seen that have been a little concerning, showing the possibility of some debris, and the, the primary one is that storm that had that tornado warning that popped up in Grimes County uh, near Richards and then rolled its way just south of the city of Huntsville and then through Point Blank and on Alaska and is now approaching Seven Oaks. But as we just heard from Bart in Point Blank, he said, we're okay right now. And that is certainly some great news. Those are the kinds of reports that we love to relay to our viewers. We still have to keep an eye on that thunderstorm between Cold Spring and the west side of Lake Livingston. Currently not showing any signs of circulation. Southwest of there, we're getting pockets of heavy rain. But again, we're not seeing things building up. What we're looking for is where lightning starts to cluster in a spot, and then we start seeing those signs of rotation on the radar. And so the only other candidate we have right now is this storm on the west side of Lake Conroe. But as I already showed you, we've had rain-cooled air sweep through the lake, so this is not the kind of storm, even though lightning's popping up, that is not the kind of storm that's going to produce a tornado. It could still produce some hail, yes, maybe some gusty winds, but not a tornado. And then south of there, it's just some regular old showers that are coming on through. And based on the orientation of the rain coming from the southwest, that tells me that we've lost the twisting of the winds in this part of southeast Texas. So you need to see those, those uh, the crisscrossing of winds going up in height. We're not seeing that with these little showers that are coming in. They're coming from the southwest to the northeast. Whereas up here, we've got wind that's still flowing from the southeast and east into the storm to generate that kind of spin that can get those storms to rotate. So we're seeing some encouraging signs right now, but we still have some warnings that are active. And Charlie, what's your question. So, um, you know, obviously a lot of uh, things going on right now up in that area. And so can you talk about the process that the National Weather Service will do presumably tomorrow to hone in on those areas where there was an observed tornado just to see, you know, try to determine how strong of a tornado it was, what kind of damage, and particularly what they use or what they look at to determine how strong wind speeds and all that. Right. So primarily what they do is they get their boots on the ground, they take a team up there, and they kind of walk along that path of where the warning was looking for signs of damage and if they see those signs of damage they document what kind of damage it was to what kind of structure or was it a tree and there's certain indicators that we've assigned different uh, different wind speeds to so if we see this happen to a tree it means this if we see that happen to a roof it means that in terms of what winds would it take to create that kind of damage some uh, one tool that they have used in the past if it's a heavily forested region is they'll put a drone up and they'll fly it along the path just to see can we see a damage path uh, from the air so that's another tool at their disposal. They might send a team out as early as this afternoon because wow. okay. uh, the weather's going to cooperate. So this is all clearing out this afternoon, right. or they might hold off until tomorrow. I'd be surprised if they don't send a, a team, and sometimes they don't if they don't have enough reports, but because they've called this a confirmed tornado, I have a feeling they're going to they're, they're want to go, go out there and see just what kind of damage this caused. Now, that said, while this has impacted some communities, it's primarily the majority's path has been a rural path, and so okay. you're you're not going to see much damage except perhaps to, to some trees. And how soon can we get some of those answers about wind speed, debris damage, all that? I mean, is it uh, hours kind of a thing where after a couple of hours looking around, they can make that determination? Yeah, usually what they'll do is they'll gather facts along the path okay. uh, and once they've completed that whole journey and they're documenting things along the way and we can see in real time as those reports come in, they'll say, hey, we found EF0 damage here because of this. We found EF1 damage here. Right. And so we can see that in real time, but anything that is is considered preliminary until they issue their final report. But usually once they're done going along the path, they'll, they'll call back to the main office okay. uh, in Dickinson and League City and say, hey, here's, here's our preliminary results. Go ahead and issue a report. And then that report will include where it touched down, where it lifted up, the path length, the size of the tornado, right. the approximate times based on radar, when it was on the ground, et cetera, and what kind of damage they found. And they'll give it a wind rating based on that enhanced Fujita scale. Wow. And, and Travis and Rachel, uh, it's both of you off. Question for you, and Rachel, we were 
again, talking about this at 8 o'clock in the morning. What have you all seen to the reason why this, you know, especially the one particular storm, was able to move and stay so strong for so long in our area? Rachel, I'll let you take that one because you, you've yeah. been here since the crack of dawn <laughs> yeah. covering these storms. I, I came in kind of late. Oh, yeah, and I mean, we were talking about it a little bit earlier mm -hmm. as well. We right. have a very interesting setup today. We have a warm front that's in our northern counties right now. We have an area of low pressure that's tracking up to the east, kind of right over where that warm front is. And then we actually have a cold front on the backside of that. And so we are seeing a lot of spin, especially where that area of low pressure is in our atmosphere. And so that same storm has just been kind of riding along that same area over the last few hours as it's continued to move off to the northeast. And unfortunately, we were kind of watching for that potential for even tornadoes, especially in our northern counties today, due to the fact that we had that warm front there in that area of low pressure. When you see that, we start to get something called wind shear. That's when winds are changing with direction and height um, in the atmosphere. And that's what can end up causing supercells or end up, in this case, causing some tornadoes. And I also do want to give a little bit of a update here on some of our warnings that we do have into effect. And I do want to reiterate this at the National Weather Service. We still do have a tornado warning out for parts of Polk County. They have dropped this to a radar-indicated rotation, where earlier we were talking radar-confirmed because we were getting such strong indications from radar that there could definitely be a tornado on the ground. So that's why they had radar confirmed in there. Now we're getting almost to the very edge of where our radar can see. So they've dropped that down to radar indicated. Either way, if you are in the path, you still want to make sure that you are prepared for the possibility of a tornado to be on the ground. Still looking at the bulk of that rotation um, just south of the Corrigan area at this moment. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. Um, also want to reiterate on this Lake Living storm right now, there is not a severe warning. This has actually dropped below severe limits as it continues to move off to the east. So this current storm that is rolling across the lake, rolling across Cold Spring at this moment, it will eventually roll into Livingston. At this point, it is not severe. That does not mean it is not bringing heavy rainfall with it, gusty winds, and also a lot of lightning. So at this point, the one warning that we still have is that same storm. The initial storm that started all these warnings is still the same storm that we are still watching that is rolling off to the northeast of Livingston. And we can take a closer look real quick at some of our velocity here. And yeah, we are getting, unfortunately, to that edge of the radar beam. And that's why it is so important. We are mm -hmm. building currently a network of radars. Eventually, we'll have one closer to the our northeastern county. So we should be able to see into storms even better, which will be so valuable as we head you know, into the next few years. Yeah, and that's what the National Weather Service just told us, that we're at the edge of the usable range of their radar, mm -hmm. so that's why they're no longer saying it is radar indicated, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Uh, it is, or not, rather, radar observed. Yep. It is radar indicated now. <laughs> and when you look at this, uh, what we call the reflectivity mode that shows you how heavy and intense things are, you'll notice there's this strong curvature, this line that curves out, indicating that strong winds are gusting on through. And then you'll notice there's this little notch up here, which often that's the sign of where there could be a tornado. So this, uh, the, the, the part of the storm is now just north of Seven Oaks. A lot of lightning here where you see the purple that's the indication likely of the presence of hail. So this could be causing some large hail coming down along 59. And this is the latest sample from the radar. Now, again, it's hitting 8,000 feet above the ground and it's detecting winds of 84, 85 miles per hour. Now it just dropped to 75 as this moves along. That does not mean that those are the winds that are being experienced at ground level. I mean, this is a mile and a half above the ground where the radar beam is detecting this. But it is showing that there is a strong, what we call mesocyclone. It's a rotating thunderstorm. That's what the radar is detecting at this time. So we continue to monitor that. Uh, the debris I think might really be what we're seeing is more hail than anything else at this time given the the way that it's spreading along the beam away from the radar site. And uh, we'll, you know, and we're not seeing any signs of other potential debris at this time. So that is certainly some good news. And earlier we were concerned about you in New Waverly. That storm has long passed. That's the one now that's hitting the west shore of Lake Livingston. And it's no longer showing signs of rotation. So I think this is winding down and what we're going to do is we're going to stay on until those tornado warnings expire for the folks that we serve in uh, northern Polk County. We care deeply about you. We're not going to leave you hanging there. But a big reminder that south of there, we're just getting some regular rain coming through. Briefly heavy at times so have the umbrella on hand. And while we are technically under a tornado watch <clears throat> for a few more hours, I think that this is the ball game right here. What we are seeing with that last rotating storm uh, to the northeast of Livingston, just north of Seven Oaks as it crosses 59. 
And, and Rachel, yes. what are you what are you seeing right and now? And yes, the National Weather Service actually is ex, ex, uh, going to expire that tornado watch for the counties west of Harris, Montgomery, and Walker. So they're going to start, you know, chipping away at those as we head into the next few hours. We have that cold front. It's going to be moving on in. That drier air is going to move in. And eventually, we could actually see sun this afternoon. Yeah, it's going to end up being a mm -hmm. nice Sunday afternoon. And for those in Houston and South, they're going to mm -hmm. say, what was the big deal? You know, we didn't I, get right. anything, right? But in our northern counties, you've had those really intense thunderstorms roll on through. I understand Rosie Wynn is, uh, is joining us now on the phone. Uh, Rosie, tell us where you're going next. Hi, Travis. So we are now live on Highway 190. Uh, we just passed Oakhurst. We are headed towards Point Blank. You can see here on our live shot that the roads are wet. You can tell that a rainstorm has been through them. Along the way, when we were driving from I-45 North over to Highway 190, we did see a few tree branches that were down on the ground, but no major damage so far on the highways. We'll keep you posted as we approach Point Blank and let you know what else we see as we get closer to those areas. Yes, back to you. That is certainly some good news. Thank you for that, Rosie. And hopefully you don't see any damage. As Bart was telling us, that storm came through Point Blank, and he didn't see anything out his window outside his property, but we don't know the whole picture just yet. So thank you for being our additional eyes on the ground as you travel there eastward along 190. That's right along the path the circulating part of that storm did take. We are getting some preliminary reports of, re of debris and power lines down around I-45 just south of Huntsville. So if our assignments desk could continue to check up on what's happening there, there as that circulation first rolled on through. I'm sorry, could you say that again? 280 customers are without power up there? Okay, yeah. So this is a fairly rural part of Southeast Texas, all things considered, um, where these storms have tracks. So you might think that's not a lot of power outages, but that is for the communities up there. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on what's happening there with the power because no one wants to be left without power. The good news is, is as humid as it is right now and as warm as it is, that's going to be uh, blowing out. So at least it won't be oppressively humid later today if folks do have the power out and can't run the AC. And temperatures will actually start cooling down. Hopefully they'll get that power back before night fall because it is going to be getting colder tomorrow. This is part of a cold free second matters when it comes to severe weather. And so the more lead time that we can give, right. the, the more likely it is that we can help folks. And this diagram, this, this graphic right here shows the National Weather Service radar, our new 13 alert radar that's in Jackson County. And notice we've got two more coming online in our northern counties later this year. I wish we could have built them years ago. We can't, but they're coming online and that's going to dramatically help us on days like today when you have all those circulations that are right. up there in a radar, what we call dead zone. So there is some coverage that we can provide, but it's 8,000 feet above the ground. That doesn't tell us what's happening in the lowest 5,000 feet. And it's really 5,000 feet and below where you can see uh, most tornadoes because most of the tornadoes that we get are on the lower end of the scale. They're more EF zeros, EF ones, and they don't always have this really huge circulation that extends miles up into the atmosphere. And so when we, when we add those new radars in, we're going to be able to see and serve our folks so much better uh, up to the north about what we're actually seeing in the lowest 5,000 feet to confirm, yeah, we see this big circulation, but what's actually happening at ground level? So those will be coming online. And we now have a strong thunderstorm alert. I've probably, I'm guessing, is for some hail and maybe some gusty winds. I'll go ahead and zoom down on that. Uh, but when you see that yellow outline that pops up, that's basically uh, a step below a severe thunderstorm warning. And so this is for 40 mile per hour winds and uh, three quarter inch size hail. So penny size hail, which is just below the threshold to get us towards uh, a quarter size hail, which would be one inch size hail. So uh, so this is going to you know maybe ding some, you'll hear the things ping off the rooftops there as this slides over the east side of Lake Livingston and impacts the community of Livingston. Definitely nothing you want to be outside in uh, with all that lightning that's coming down as well. And notice all the plus signs that you're seeing. There's two types of lightning that we, that we, uh, we can divide it up into two categories. <clears throat> Excuse me, negative strikes and positive strikes. The positive strikes are the ones that occur near the top of the thunderstorm cloud. So they start up here. They've got such a long distance to travel. They're incredibly powerful. So if you've ever heard those really long, rolling booms of thunder that seem to last forever and they rattle the windows in the home, those are the positive lightning strikes. And those are the ones that cause the majority of lightning fatalities. The negative strikes are more survivable. The positive ones, not so much. So we say when thunder roars, head indoors. So if you're hearing those rumbles of thunder anywhere around Lake Livingston, stay inside. You do not want to cross paths with one of those lightning strikes. Now, let me go ahead and pan back over to our tornado warning for our folks here in uh, northern uh, Polk County. And so we still have
have these warnings that are out until 1115. The main part of the storm that could cause a tornado has already passed you in Seven Oaks, and we're still seeing the kind of signature that says even if there's not a tornado, this is very likely producing some gusty winds that could also cause damage, that could rip off some roof shingles, knock over some weakened fence line, or diseased and old trees. That's all a possibility. The worst part of that storm is going to stay, is staying to the south of you in Corrigan, but again, you're in that lightning core and possibly have gotten some hail. So this is almost out of the part of southeast Texas that we serve, and again, things are looking okay for the rest of us despite being under that tornado watch for a few more hours. So the Weather Service has already dropped off uh, some of our northwestern counties, and we're likely going to see all the other counties follow suit because those ingredients that can create those rotating storms, again, those are all lifting on off to the northeast. And I'm curious to know, Rachel, if you've seen anything else come across the National Weather Service chat in terms of damage reports so Not far. Not yet. Um, I did see uh, Elise sent this to me a bit earlier. This was earlier today. There was quarter to ping pong ball size hail confirmed near New Waverly. So in addition to the fact that we've been watching out for obviously tornado warnings coming out in rotation, there's also been indications of also hail coming in. And that's what we were also expecting today, the possibility for some large hail because we had so much instability to work with. Right. So in some cases, we saw pea-sized hail. We saw that starting off in College Station at about 8.30 to 9 a.m. this morning. And that's actually that storm that continued to roll off to the northeast and has been creating pretty much tornadoes over the last uh, couple of hours, or at least tornado um, mornings over the last few hours. So, But at this point, that is the latest we have seen in terms of damage reports. Of course, if you happen to see anything, please let us know. Um, we also have Rosie Wynn, who's heading out to that area as well, where we have seen some of the strongest winds over the last few hours, but you know, Travis was just saying, you know, oh, the heaviest part of that storm. Now moving on off to the east, uh, just south and east of Corrigan at this point, we'll be heading over towards 287, over towards the Chester area, um, which is just outside of where we usually cover. And then, yes, we are still watching for this one strong storm that is over into Livingston at this moment. It is not um, a high enough risk for it to be considered a severe storm for that. Um, so a little bit of a closer view there. It is moving on off to the east. We will have this this strong thunderstorm alert going until 11:15 a.m. So this includes parts of Polk, San Jacinto counties. Could see some gusty winds up to 40 miles per hour and penny-sized hail. Um, again, this is rolling over the city of Livingston as it continues to roll off to the east. Uh, and Travis just said it too. You know, it does look like uh, we have seen uh, a lot of these storms kind of lose their oomph in their power over the last uh, 15 to 20 minutes or so. So that is encouraging news for us. Again, we are still very concerned with that system that is just off to the east of Corrigan. We'll continue to roll off to the east. The rest of us at this moment, looking at a few showers, um, not even seeing a whole lot in terms of, you know, lightning and thunder at this point, but still looking at that rainfall stretching down from New Waverly, Conroe, the Woodlands, even down into Houston, down towards Smith Point, and a little bit closer to the coast. So we just have a lot of moisture to work with out there today, um, which really helped to fuel our chance of rain. With that rainfall, it is going to come to an end within the next few hours. The cold front will be pushing through. Drier air is going to be moving on in. So by the time we get to the afternoon, some of us could be looking at some of that sunshine actually returning to southeast Texas. And sometimes, Rachel, we draw the cold front on the map to help you really kind of identify where it is. To. You don't need to in this mm -hmm. situation. So I want to show you the temperature map right now. Here is the, the front. You can see that sharp dividing line between temperatures that are currently in the mid-70s. We didn't really drop much below 70 degrees last night which is one reason why we've had these severe storms today. We live near this very warm body of water called the Gulf of Mexico. So we actually have severe weather season that we say starts January 1st and runs until December 31st. We can get severe storms at any time of the year. And sometimes uh, history has shown that we can get some of our biggest tornadoes in the cold season, in the winter months. And so we've seen numerous warnings today. But uh, so ahead of this, we've got uh, temperatures currently in the 70s. And then behind the front, it's dropping off pretty quickly quickly now, 63 in Navasota and 60 in College Station. So if you're up here northwest of Houston and you can feel that cold air, you're definitely done with the tornado threat and the rain has already pretty much moved on out. I also want to show you how the winds are turning more southwesterly ahead of the front. I mentioned that earlier, how these showers that are coming across Houston are coming in in the southwesterly direction in the lowest levels. That usually indicates that the tornado threat is over, but we're not seeing those winds still out of the southwest up here near, uh, near Livingston and Polk County, where we still have more of a 
a southerly flow, so there's still room for those winds to rotate and potentially produce tornadoes. But, uh, so as Rachel was saying, the sun is going to come out this afternoon, and this humidity, this really soupy air is going to be out of here, and then we'll be done with uh, rain for a few days. We do have another rainy weather system on the way coming later this week. Looks like it's going to land around Friday, but at this time, not seeing signs of severe weather, but another powerful area of low pressure is expected to pop up off to the west and southwest of Houston. So it's something we're certainly going to be eyeing for the possibility. Early indications, though, right now are that it's going to be more of a rainmaker. So I know it's warm and humid right now in Houston. That's going to be changing as this front rolls in, and I do think that we don't have to be concerned right now about any other storms that are in the vicinity of Houston Harris County uh, starting to pop up and rotate. So at this time, uh, this this event, as we as we would, would like to call it, is winding down, and so uh, so we're very grateful for that. Uh, we just need to get through the, you know another five minutes or so before that warning up in Polk County completely expires. Yeah, All right, Travis. Travis. Yeah, and we have actually gotten, you know, reports. We've gotten videos of hail, too. We were talking about it a little bit earlier. Let's see if we can go ahead and pull up some of the video. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll see if we can get that for you. But, yes, we've been watching out for any sort of report today. So, please, if you do have any reports, please let us know. Also, you know, weather spotters, weather watchers are so important to us. That's why we actually ended up first seeing our confirmed on that tornado warning earlier today as it rolled over towards the Richards area, I believe, which is um, kind of close to Anderson just off to the east of Anderson. So, uh, Weather Watchers, thank you so much for keeping an eye out for us today. And Rachel, and quick question. What was it about, you know, over an hour ago? Because you were watching the radar and we heard you when you said, oh no, this is going to turn into something. I can see it right now. What was the signifier where you said, we got to zone in on this immediately? Yeah, and I mean, this was what we look for, you know, our velocity winds. We've been showing it to you over the last few hours, and I just started to see some, you know, a little bit of hooking, a little bit of that twisting in those winds, and uh, that's what I think I told y'all. It was like, next five minutes, we, we need to, pri they're probably going to put out a warning, 75% yeah. mm -hmm. chance we're going to end up with a warning in five minutes, and unfortunately, that's what happened, and then we just kept seeing, you know, it's just the environment that we've had really north of I-10 today has been so conducive to that rotation in these storms. You know, we've seen hail from it. We've also seen, you know, probably a tornado touchdown. We saw that confirmed um, touchdown earlier today um, that came in from an actual storm spotter, and it's possible it could have touched down in many more places as it continued to roll off to the northeast. So yes, our Doppler winds, very important. We have a Doppler radar that's in League City. It's sending out these pulses of energy. When it hits something, the frequency that is returned back to the radar, the radar is actually able to interpret that to figure out whether or not that the what it hits is actually going towards or away from the radar. And so because we have that capability to do that, that's when we are able to tell um, which way the winds are going and when we can actually tell if those uh, winds are rotating over towards uh, um, in the counterclockwise d direction. But I believe now we might have our hail video coming in. And I believe you said Lake Livingston? Lake Livingston. So yes, we are seeing some pictures coming in from oh, okay. Lake Livingston. So yes, definitely um, seeing hail reports there. Looks like could be pretty close to quarter size. Yeah, um, it looks pretty big. It does look pretty big, unfortunately. So yes, these storms packed a punch. You know, obviously some very strong. Yeah, that's a big, go. big yeah. New Waverly here. I mean, yep, that one coming in over quarter size. I think mean, potentially can't tell unless it's sitting up next to a ruler for sure. But it potentially could be closer to ping pong ball sized hail there. And what can you tell by the size? I mean, it really, the, the the stronger the storm, the stronger the updraft of that storm, the stronger, the more amount of time that hail is going to last inside that storm. So basically, the stronger the storm you get, the bigger the hail you're going to end up seeing. So, I mean, I'm not surprised at all that we are starting to see over quarter size hail reported in parts of southeast Texas, and especially with those storms that were once tornado warned. And like Travis was saying, we are going to stay on until that warning does go out. It is still still in the very northeastern portions of Polk County, but it does look like that main area, the strongest part of the storm, the 
area of possible rotation is now moving on off to the east. It is now moving over into Tyler County. I'm going to go ahead. Again, it's, it's hard to see with um, some of our radar here, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much to the end of the National Weather Service radar, what they can see, but it is almost out of Polk County at this point. Now, does that mean that this storm is still not strong back off to the west? No, it is still a strong storm. It's still bringing heavy rainfall and lots of lightning with it, but it does look like the potential rotation part of this storm is now moving on east over towards the Chester area. And then we're also still keeping a close eye on this other storm that is back over here towards Livingston. This still has a strong thunderstorm alert on it. Um, so this will go until around 1115 a.m. And it does look like the latest in from the National Weather Service, you know, they're saying as well that Polk County storm is nearly out of our warning area at this point. Um, so we're going to keep that. They said they might actually keep that um, tornado warning going until about, you know, um, 1130, but they're most likely going to cancel it before that. That's great news. Yeah. That's exactly what we want to see. And then we got some decent weather blowing in for this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So the rest of our weekend, we can kind of go out and enjoy. And certainly we are hoping that we can get this out of here pretty quickly. Our, our, our regional tower cam network is showing that we still have all those clouds around. But look at this view in Lake Conroe as the sun is now poking out. I think we're going to see a lot more of that as we journey into the afternoon. Here's a, a closer view. So the, the rain clouds are now off in the distance. The wind has turned out of the northwest. The temperature has dropped down to 64 degrees. So while we still see see this large tornado watch out. I really think a lot of this is going to be dropped out of here pretty quickly by the National Weather Service because the main threat, again, is lifting off to the northeast. There's the tornado warning. What's left of it, the part of that storm that could be producing a tornado is almost out of the county. And then as we uh, move back to the southwest, we still have that strong thunderstorm alert, mainly for the hail. You've seen that hail. That certainly can cause some damage to rooftops and also to the hood of your vehicle as well. And we're still seeing uh, pockets of heavy rain down through Montgomery County in the northern Harris County, but nothing that is showing signs of severe. So there's the front, 70s ahead of it, 60s behind it. There's the area of low pressure that is tracked along that boundary. That's where we've seen all the severe weather, where uh, the, the winds are really twisting around. We call that high wind shear. And look what's coming in behind this front. We've got temperatures freezing and below from Lubbock to Amarillo. And look at what is happening up there as I throw on the satellite and radar loop. Heavy snow is coming down in the Texas Panhandle. So yeah, Yes, while it doesn't feel like winter here right now, we've had these tornadic storms. Winter is coming back to Houston. We're not going to get any snow. Sorry, kids, but the cold air blowing off that snowpack is going to reach us. So we have tornado watches, severe thunderstorm watches in Louisiana. Again, all that is going to be lifting out of here pretty quickly. I think we're going to be just fine the rest of the afternoon. And look at that snow that's coming down. Uh, this is additional snowfalls over the next couple of days. Uh, so it's going to track right through Oklahoma City as well. And what's going to happen is with that snow now on the ground, and that wind coming in from the northwest blowing towards us off that snowpack, it's going to be feeling pretty chilly by tomorrow. Temperatures are expected to go from the 70s for highs today to the 50s tomorrow. Winds could potentially gust to 40 miles per hour, so that can cause the power to flicker here and there. And then tomorrow night, when that wind settles down, we got that cold air rushing in here, we're going to drop down into the upper 30s, mid-30s north of Houston, which could be enough to put a little frost on the ground, especially with how wet the ground is going to be from the rains that have fallen north of Houston. Houston today. Valentine's Day is still looking pretty good, so uh, excited about that to get finally a holiday that's got nice weather here in Southeast Texas. And then after Valentine's Day, that's that next rainy weather system that I was telling you about. So rain chances are about to go way up here on Friday, potentially into Saturday, but centered around Friday is what it's looking like. And I think more than anything, this is going to be just a big rainmaker, a soaking rain that lasts for hours on end. But we'll have to be on guard for the possibility that it could also produce severe weather like we've seen so far today. This next low pressure center is going to be a little more farther to the southwest of Houston than what this current one has been doing today. And then after that, we should get a little sunshine. President's Day is also in view of our 10-day forecast. So for those that have that day off right now, we're calling for decent weather. Of course, that's nine days away. And there is the potential that some Arctic air could follow that rainmaker later in the week. So we're going to keep an eye on that as well. But the point of me showing you all of this is because now that the mess is almost out of here, we're going to get to enjoy some nice weather for the rest of what's left of our weekend. And then the sunshine is back certainly coming up on Monday and again on Tuesday.
Tuesday. So uh, excited about uh, once we get this out of here and we right. can go back to enjoying our weekend. That is the good news, Travis. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Well, we have a second to catch our breath here. Mm -hmm. We've been incredibly busy for over the last, what, hour and a half hour now? Hour and a half, yeah. And so I uh, just want to take a moment to uh, ask you all out there to download our ABC 13 mobile app. Uh, we will keep you aware of any severe weather that is happening across our viewing area. And I just checked my phone and we had several push alerts coming mm -hmm. uh, throughout all of these tornado warnings that have been happening. And so uh, I know we have that hail video, uh, if we can get Let to that right here. And so I know we have some viewers who shared photos with us of that hail. Uh, there it is right there, yeah. From Jamie Lantern. Yeah, and you can see just, I mean, you know, almost like a whole handful there. And just the size of it, I mean, it just gives you a really good idea of just how severe <laughs> the weather was that rolled through so quickly. I'm still stunned at how fast this storm moved. I mean, you know, Rachel was giving everybody as much warning as possible. Uh, but before we knew it, I mean, especially when it was approaching the Huntsville area, it was literally, we watched it go right on top of Huntsville over the interstate. Uh, you know, and so, of course, uh, it still remains to be seen what kind of damage this storm brought. Hopefully everybody remained safe, but you know, definitely alarming when you see hail that size. And that hail, uh, New Waverly and Charlie, you were talking about it. I mean, we were sitting at this desk. It was like 8.30. 9 o'clock comes. We're like, okay, radar keeps moving. And right. around 9.20 is when these tornado warnings right. happen. And we've been in uh, tornado warning coverage since then. So, like, as you mentioned, this just tells you the severity of these storms. Yeah. They, they moved fast. We saw New Waverly. Uh, we had the tornado warnings that got extended. Walker County, uh, Mm -hmm. We saw Rosie out heading towards New Waverly. We had just Bob Pack. He was in Montgomery. We just, right. that stretch, yeah. the, the storms, they moved fast. Moving and moving, and the warnings were following <laughs> the path of the storm. And what was incredible to me is when we took those live pictures earlier, yep. and, you know, you could see blue sky in some of those shots mm -hmm. as if nothing had happened. And so it just gives you a really good idea of just how severe and fast these storms move through the area. And, and speaking of Rosie, I think we have her back live. She is headed towards Point Blank. She's in Point Blank. So, Rosie, um, tell us what you're seeing. I think you're in a neighborhood right now. Uh, good morning to you.